turning things around.
Give me yes, thank you, yes, thank you, yes. Amen. We got all family. Oh, yeah. We can show up today. We just got family in the house. We got family in the house. So to all the family and to all of you who are streaming live via Facebook Live, we say welcome to the worship experience here at the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church on this last Sunday in 2018. We thank God that He has brought us all. Say to him, thank you for allowing us to see a whole year. And we will keep up our worship at home. We decided to bring that with us. So we thank God for you. As you well know, I am Pastor Bobby McKenzie. And my wife is This is just family. Macedonia, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of me and my wife and my family. Our leaders, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being who you are. Um, while I have the mic at this time, let me just let me say this because I'm looking out across the congregation and man, some of y'all ain't got no smiles on y'all face. Some of y'all are looking like, man, I got the worst day in the world. Going on right now. You know, you know it's like you just celebrated Christmas. You, 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 you looking like somebody convinced you this time ain't no Santa Claus. I can tell you that. But it is still the best Christmas ever. So I just want to make sure you. Look like you best. Yes. You got a couple of teeth in your mouth. I see it over there. Look at you. You look like you bald. Just show it. Right, you got a smile on your face at this time. Would you please stand and greet one another? Come on, play, play. <laughs>
worship experience, kind of get that momentum so that 2019 we're already rolling. Yeah. And so ain't no need of nobody being late to church no more. Yeah. Yeah. Be fashionably late. Just come on in and we'll start right on time at 11 and 12.30. You can be in the parking lot already cranking the car up and rolling. So we want to do the very best we can to uh, be timely with that. Uh, but you can help us because if you show up on time, we'll finish on time. Yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah. Also, I, I almost, and I don't get scared off a lot of things, but I almost got scared this morning. No, I almost got right. scared. Sunday school, yeah, we had everybody in Sunday school was sitting like in a corner right, right over here. <laughs> Like right in this area right here. Yes, sir. And we do recognize that a lot of, uh, that we had some people downstairs working in the uh, downstairs, I'm, I'm guessing. But listen, adults, don't let the kids be the only one coming to Sunday school. Yeah. 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 So I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if you have been here this morning, I guarantee you will learn something. We were talking about being here and the wise men. I guarantee you would have learned possibly where the wise men actually came from. Yeah. And why they actually became known as the wise men. Yeah. 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 I guarantee you, you would have found out that Herod wasn't the truth. No, he wasn't. Yeah. And what he actually was and why that's significant. Yeah. I guarantee you, you would have figured out that God himself possibly called the wise men to come yeah. see him. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the motives you need. Let me let me. I don't listen. I I'll be mean, firm with you. I don't know everything about scripture, but what I do know is that I'm learning more and more. And if I didn't know it, and I'm learning, you might not have known it either. So we invite you to come and join us at 9.30 in the a.m. Please, and we might say, man, that's so early. You know what? It come around at the same time every day. It's earlier on Sunday than it is on Monday. It's the same time. If you mess around and, and, and accidentally get out of bed on Saturday morning at 9.30, 24 hours later, that same 9.30 going to come around and show up in the church. That's all, I, that's all I'm saying. So we do welcome you to come and join us at, at, um, at, at 9.30 on Sunday morning for Sunday school. Amen. And then, you know, that get good to you. Stick around for 11 o'clock for our worship experience. Yeah. And then you get charged up there. That'll get you all the way to Wednesday. Yeah. And then at 6.30 on Wednesday, you yeah. press service and Bible study. Yeah. And you just run get fired up on that yeah. come back and on Sunday. Yeah. See how that works. You can see the salute. So, uh, I got some. It ain't sad news. But it's like, oh, it's, it's, oh, say, oh, 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 today is the last Sunday that Dr. Curtis will be with us until, oh, until March, April sometime. Oh, that's all right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he travels. Um, Dr. Curtis, and there was a gentleman that I knew that was in the similar age range as Dr. Curtis. Um, I'm not jealous of anything. <laughs> if any man put his pants on one leg at a time like me, I ain't jealous of it. I ain't jealous of it. But I highly respect him from the standpoint of he has lived his life and God has blessed him to the point that he can be a cold weather if he wants to. <laughs> if he really wants to, he's been here, but he don't have to. I just remember the first time I met Dr. Curtis, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, he went, as I, I think, he went on a cruise or something on the Baltic or the Mediterranean Sea, somewhere. He was somewhere. And all the things I was thinking, like, man, I'm still here in the snow. <laughs> But we, we want to pray uh, safe travels for Dr. Curtis. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
quiet loud. He's a quiet loud. His presence is loud. Like you know that Dr. Curtis is in the room. And so Dr. we'll miss you. We thank God for you. We pray for you. And wherever you go, be safe and come on back. Amen. Um, don't let me forget today. We need to pray for uh, Sister Carter and her. What's the daughter's name? Linda. Sister Linda Estelle. Estelle. She is greatly beautiful. And so, as a church, we want to pray for her before we leave. Um, I had the chance late Friday night. Late Friday night, I had the chance to pray with them on the phone. And uh, I'll probably pray with them on the phone as they are headed to Maryland or uh, wherever they are. Um, I'll be praying with them again, but I need the church to pray. Amen. I need the church to pray because um, God is always in control. Amen. He's always in control. But sometimes his control don't make us feel good. Amen. So we want, to, uh, we want to make sure we pray. Um, I'll let the let the cat out the bag early, and then we're gonna do our offering uh, today. Uh, our preacher is going to be Minister Shonet Spicer. <laughs> she has a message that is perfect for the last Sunday in December and the last Sunday in 2018 uh, as you well know we, we have been and we're preaching the sermon series the best Christmas ever so if I had preach today, I will talk to you about the Prince of Peace. Subtitle, The Gift of Peace. And when you have the gift of peace, especially coming off Christmas, because let me hear me tell you, your Christmas wasn't complete unless you got peace in your life. And if I had the opportunity, yes, by some presentation, I would have told you <laughs> that when you have the gift of, of, of peace, you first of all start off by having peace with God. Amen. Listen, if I had the opportunity, I would tell you that some of us are waging a secret war against God. We are absolutely angry, mad, frustrated, and disappointed because God is able to bless, but He ain't blessing you. So therefore, you don't have peace like you really want to because you can't get your peace through your pain. If I were to preach, preach that, <laughs> I would have told you that until you have peace with God, you ain't going to have peace nowhere. Oh, <laughs> nowhere. Then I would have told you if you had the gift of peace, you would not only have peace with God, you would have peace with yourself. Too many times we don't allow ourselves to make mistakes. Too many times we don't forgive ourselves. Too many times we don't let ourselves off the hook. Too many times we focus so much on what we did and what we didn't do and what we have and what we don't have. I would have told you that you need to have some peace about you before you don't have peace with anybody else. If I was preaching. <laughs> and if you had the gift of peace, I would tell you, not only do you have the gift, the peace with God, and not only do you have peace within yourself, now you can have peace with other people. 
And you will know if you have peace with other people because the folks still make you real, real mad just because you ain't got no peace. If the thought about life cause you to get sad, you ain't got no peace. If I was preaching. But since I'm not preaching today, just go ahead and know that you have the best Christmas ever, but perhaps there is one gift still under the tree you need to unwrap, and that's called peace. Thank you for every giver. Thank you for every sower. You said you would give seed to the sower and you give bread to the eater. You said that you would make all grace abound toward us so that we would have all sufficiency for all good works. You said, God, that you would never allow us to have lack because if we spare, if we sow sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. But we ain't going to do that. We're going to sow bountifully today. Because, so we're going to reap bountifully. And because they've already showed their teeth today, they are cheerful givers today. So we thank you right now for being who you are, for giving us peace of mind that as we give, we ain't missing nothing. We're actually getting something. So we love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm starting to get off all of our preachers, our deacons, our trustees, and then you, my sisters, and my brothers. At this time, you please stand and face the wall, and the ushers will direct it from the rear. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, the song we're about to sing um, is dedicated to Macedonia because we are all children of God. And uh, Pastor has showed us how, has taught us how to pray and to uh, bless someone else. When you pray, you pray for not just yourself. I hope that's not all you're praying for because he has taught us. Do not just pray for yourself. You pray for others and you will be blessed. So when the saints go to worship and all of God's children go into pray, then power is there. And things can be changed. Lives can be saved. Souls can be saved. And there is nothing like it. So if you don't know the Lord, listen to the sermon today and know that you can be in that number. And that you can be one of those saints that can save souls. And I'm not preaching. I'm not
Hallelujah. If you will, please stand and turn with me to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. God is a good God. Philippians 3. We're going to start the 12th verse. I will be reading from the New King James Version. And in that, in that version it reads, Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay a hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid a hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to be have apprehended, Encouraging them 
in the midst of his pain. And say, young folks say, where they do that at? The believers. Come on now. What about you? Uh-huh. When you're not feeling good, what do you do? Uh-huh. When I'm talking about you, what do you do? Come on now. When everything about your life seems to be crumbling, what do you do? Can I tell you, Paul says, finish on. Right. 
right. Just maybe. Maybe not in two. Maybe your health then went haywire. Just maybe that's you. Just maybe your kid acting crazy. <laughs> Read that. Yeah. It's like possibility is true. Come on now. Maybe your boss then got on your last <laughs> Just maybe. Just, I, I don't know if it's true, but I'm just saying. Just maybe. And my kid, I want I want you to know, maybe the teacher's on your nerve. Amen. 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 Maybe your parents straight tripping. And if Ty Spicer was here, he'd say, Amen. <laughs> Amen again. <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> Just maybe. But see, in Scripture, despite what we have experienced, Paul is telling us that we can't hold back and let back, hold back, set back, hold us back. Amen. Amen. So what happens is a lot of times when we have issues, we put it in a bag and it becomes luggage. Come on, man. Dragging yeah. our past. 
but you be strong. And do not let your hands be weak, for the work shall be rewarded. That means there's going to be some things that's going to get your arms. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. 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 
got to do? Yes. Oh my God, you say you want souls saved and in for Christ in 2019. That's what you going to have to do. Press. Oh my God, press. Somebody say press. press. Say it again. Say press. press. Paul reminds us that the pressing process requires a focused mindset. Yes. I need you to understand, he specifically said in the words, toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God. In Christ Jesus. So I promise you, and I'm going to show you this real because I didn't, this wasn't in my sermon. But when I was pressing to not get part of church, <laughs> he won. It ain't bad about something. Stop pressing me for it. Why? Because you're supposed to be talking to church. You're focused on who?
almost started and finished it all at the same time. Yeah. Right. If you want to finish strong, you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the perfect opportunity. The preacher already told us that you need to actually forget some things. Yeah. Forget about what happened prior to the day. Forget about the rest of 2018. Yeah. But right now, you are at the opportunity where you can forget about those things that are behind you. And now you can go ahead and do the second point, reach. Your reach is a mind decision right now. I am reaching up to Christ because he's reaching out to you. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you reach him right now as he's reaching out to you by accepting him as your Lord and your Savior? If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. If you're here today, this is your opportunity for you here. But you had an opportunity not only to forget some things, but to reach some things. But here's where the real hard part comes in. If it is a hard part, you may have to press. Press through the fact that you don't want to come today. You won't try to do it in 2009.
thank you right now for preaching a message to me that was in time and in old time, God. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we need to forget some things. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we need to reach forward. And Lord, once we have forgotten it, once we start reaching, even when situations come, Lord, you reminded us in the sermon that we need to press through some stuff. And so right now, we press through even ourselves right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you in advance for healing, delivering, and setting free right now, God. We thank you for these who are here at the altar. There are people at the altar right now, God, whose heart is still hurting because the holidays have found them and loved ones that have gone on to be with you. And it is not the greatest time for them right now, God. But we trust, God, that you're still going to finish strong. And we trust that you're going to give them the, the gift of peace right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for those who are here who are not well in their body. Lord, we thank you right now that even though the doctor said what they said, even though the person said what it said, you are the great physician and we trust you, God. For those doctor visits that are coming up, God, for those things that are making us nervous right now in the name of Jesus, we turn it all over to you right now. We give it to you, God, for you said something to us in your word. You said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh, God. We're still believing that you're 